Hey, what's going on world of YouTube? So I just had a brilliant idea to do a size comparison between the new 45, F250, 3500, and a previous generation 3500. So obviously 2019 current generation, 2017 F250 current generation, 2016 3500 current generation, and then a 2006 3500 previous generation. So um, as you can see, Difference in height on these truck between the 250 and the 4500. Look at the roof lines. Not a lot of difference, right? However, uh, trust me, yep, I'm working on this one right now. Fuel filter, exhaust fluid, pain in the ass. Roof line between the uh, 250 and the 3500, somewhat of a difference. These two, not much of a difference. So, took out a tape, 83 and a half inches from the ground to the top of the roof on the 45. 82 on my 250 and 75 on the 3500. Now keep in mind that's a four-wheel drive on the 250 so it will sit a little bit higher than say my 35 that's stock and this guy that is uh, also a two-wheel drive. And then so still no body on it there. It's going to sit here for about a month because we've got a four to six week lead time before they're ready to take it for the uh, body. But we did sign and confirm for the body plans uh, this morning, actually. So that is done and taken care of. However, um, one thing that I thought was interesting to point out. So, OK, we're talking about the heights of these trucks, right? So this 4500 is roughly an inch and a half taller in height than my F250 and just about tip to tip, or uh, sorry, on edge to edge of the trucks, they are equally as wide. I'm not 100% squared up in front of it, but if I take a step right next to him, you can see, I mean, there's barely any difference in the width here. But, fun fact on the 4500, I know I sound like a Chevy salesman, but I'm not, I swear, I'm a f anything but General Motors guy. Hey, Crosby. The uh, wheels on this truck turn in so much into the engine bay the engine actually sits up pretty high on this and just like on the previous generation top kick and kodiaks from gm the wheels they really turn in giving this thing a gotta admit badass turning radius this thing can turn on anything so it has 50 degrees of a wheel rake and so go get your ball anyway <laughs> um yeah, this thing can seriously turn. I don't know what, uh, how many feet it requires uh, to make a U-turn, um, but if you make a U-turn in this thing, chances are it'll make it because the wheels can turn in so much. However, if you're at an intersection, you just gotta cut it really wide because the back end still needs to come back around. And one other thing, I made a mistake in my previous video that I did on this truck. This drum right here, not a damper. This is actually your parking brake, and so, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, nothing breaks that Allison transmission. I doubt it, but, you know, I still got to make jokes about it being a Chevy. I actually didn't measure the height of the roof line on this guy, but as you can see, it sits lower than the 35, so I'm guessing it's probably 70 to 72 inches or so, versus the newer 3500 being at 75 so there's nothing exciting to report on this truck like i said it's going to sit here for another month before anything gets done with it just because we need to get the body made and then there's a once they accept it for the body it's going to take i think another four weeks for them to manufacture it so i mean we're talking two whole months before this thing is even ready to rock and roll so it's not like i'm going to be producing videos about it um, for quite a while but in the meantime i'm still driving the 250 spent the day driving this thing all over creation and um, this thing it's a uh, it's a 15 uh, 3500 it's got 64,000 miles two new fuel pumps a new def pump um, new trans lines the actual trans cooler uh, line fell off the uh, quick connect was broken on it and dumped all the trans fluid on the freeway so yeah, this thing's got a new trans in it. And then this one right here is an 06 3500 LBZ. And she's got 140,000 on it. And it pretty much has an entirely new EGR system and new primer pump on it. And that's, oh, I just did the brakes too, a couple months ago. So other than that, this one's been a really good truck. F-250, I still absolutely love that thing to death. I just rolled over 79,000 miles on it. So, but anyways, if you guys got questions on, honestly, any of these trucks, I mean, 
we, we still have more too. This is only four of them, but let me know because I do all the service on these things and I can answer all your questions. Hello world of YouTube. Here she is, the completed 2019 4500 uh, Silverado with the enclosed 12 foot uh, Harbor Workmaster body. As you can see, this truck is absolutely huge. Um, like I said before, it's a 12, master, uh, 12 foot Workmaster. Comes in weighing at 11,975 pounds unloaded for the weigh certificate and the 3500 is currently being unloaded into this beast. So we'll do a quick walk around now that it's got the body on it. It's nothing out of the ordinary or different than your standard uh, enclosed plumber's van that you would see going down the freeway, other than the fact that it's essentially mounted on a semi. Um, driving this truck, it is, everything about it is absolutely huge. Uh, you sit really, really high. It's actually kind of funny how high you sit because you can peek into all the other cars around you and see people picking their noses and shaving their legs and whatnot. That's actually happened, just not in this one. Um, but so you can get the full profile view. I took it to uh, Lowe's the other day and this truck takes up two entire parking spaces at Lowe's front to back with like maybe a foot and a half left over. Um, and then in comparison to the 3500 and then in comparison to the 3500 dump truck, that's a six, that's a 15 and then that's a 19 so you can kind of get the idea of how these things have just grown and grown but um, to answer some of the questions that people have been posting in the comments below how does it drive okay so this truck is huge uh, the turning radius is phenomenal on it like I said in a previous video 50 degrees of rake it turns very very well actually let me go on the other side where there's no bushes so yeah 50 degrees of rake it turns really really well the only problem with that is this thing is so long, you have the back ender that's going to be swinging around as well. Earlier today, before I left, I was trying to turn it around in this space right here in which it took about four different tries because these two trucks right here were pulled out a little bit further and uh, it just doesn't like to turn because she's so long. But if you've got plenty of room, it'll make a U-turn, it'll negotiate and navigate just fine. but. You gotta plan for it if you're gonna park it somewhere. Much like with going to Lowe's and Home Depot, like I said, you gotta plan for where you're gonna park. And uh, how does it ride? So when you're just cruising down the road, it's not terrible. It's firm, but it's not rough, it's not terrible. I think the airbag suspension makes a big difference. However, if you go over a speed bump, pothole, or anything like that, this front axle absolutely crashes over anything and everything in its way. It's really rough. And then the back, once the back end goes over, it's not that bad. And especially now that we're getting some weight in it, it's not terrible, but it is rough or it is firm rather. And it is a medium duty vehicle. So I wouldn't expect it to ride out like a, like an old Cadillac or something. It is a washboard. So then another thing too is gas mileage. I think I still got the keys on me. Yeah, I do. Let's check the gas mileage. Now this truck is only got, I think it's about 200 miles on it or so. So gas mileage is not going to be very accurate, but just to give you an idea, and it's in regen right now. So let's see. Average 8.4, best 12.1 on 202 miles. And like I said, it is in regen right now, so it's not going to be getting very good mileage to begin with. And then it also is going to be recorded over mostly city driving and again 202 miles so not much of anything and then um one other thing on this truck too is the braking so we turn back around actually the roof lines on this thing the bags are inflated right now the roof line is about the same on truck to truck in comparison so give you an idea and then look at the deck height between the bumpers not everybody's going to have this kind of a body on it so it might not be very accurate but box to box i mean the bumpers are almost the same but my brother pointed one thing out earlier today if you take a look underneath you got the gas tank right here it's got a shield on it but right there you can see something's already hit the uh, gas tank shield right there and if you were to drop the uh the airbags like if you backed into something like backed over something rather drop the airbags i can imagine you know you probably got 14 15 inches of clearance right there between the two so not a whole lot of clearance and then the same goes for the mounting bracket for the airbags you can see right there 
not a whole lot of ground clearance and the bags they are inflated so I mean this is the height that it's going to sit at so right there I don't have a tape measure on me but you can see not a ton of clearance so I'd be slightly leery about uh, backing in over things because the last thing you want to do is rip up that uh, mounting bracket and rip up your airbag and then not have the air drop on it but um so this has that new uh, l5p l5d duramax the uh, exhaust brake is really aggressive on it as it should be because this thing is a monster however the braking on it is really good it's uh, very responsive you do have to be very very deliberate with your braking though so if you're going to stop you do have to be deliberate and forceful with your foot on the pedal otherwise it doesn't want to slow down but if you control your stops plan your stops obviously it's got a lot of braking power i mean the calipers take up probably half of the tire or half the rim on this truck kind of hard to look through the hole on the wheel but the exhaust brake it's very helpful it's very uh, aggressive and the engine tone on this thing it uh I mean, it's deep it's uh, pretty aggressive sounding and then if you actually if you get on it the turbo whistle is pretty loud on it too but overall i mean it's it is a neat truck it's not like anything else really on the road considering that this is only a 4500 but it's pretty much built like a 65 or 7500 series truck and in comparison to like a ram 4500 or a ford 450 or 550 I mean, it's a much larger truck. The frame is beefier, the brakes are bigger, and uh, it definitely feels like it's a lot more stout in comparison to the other two. And that's me being a uh, not General Motors guy. So this is uh, just the first impressions. Like I said, this thing's only been to work for, what, two days, three days? So not a lot of uh, use or experience behind the wheel of it or out being just at work in general. So there will be more to come. And if there's any other questions people have, obviously put it in the comments and I'll try my best to uh, answer it as time goes on.